In this video, we'll be using the printk function and the logger module to print messages to the UART console. In this first exercise, we'll use the printk function so that when we press the button on the thingy91, the factorials of the numbers from 1 to 10 will be printed on the console. For the exercise, we first have to go to the GitHub repository and clone it to use it in Visual Studio Code and follow the steps to create an existing application. The third and fourth steps here will not be identical for our application on the Thingy91 since we need to put the device in DFU mode to load our application X file and turn it on and off before turning the terminal program which will be put in our video. Now we will look at our main.c file and make sure that we include the header file for the printk function under step 6 and then under step 7 we will be printing our first message. However, due to the constraint I mentioned about the Thingy I will also put this message in the infinite loop with a delay of one second so that we will see this message being periodically written on the console. Here you can see it in the main function, but we will also have this message in the infinite loop as well in this while one loop. And now we will be building and flashing our code to see it running. Now let's connect our Thingy91 device to our laptop and then we will be putting it into DFU mode and we will do that by pressing the button on the Thingy and at the same time turning the switch on. And it will be put into DFU mode. Now I will just create a comment in the code so that you will be able to see the build process because I had built it recently. So once we click on build, it's going to build our device. I'm going to trim this section and now the build is complete. And in the programmer tool, we are going to be selecting our app underscore sign.txt. You can see that it's recent. And we will click on write and write once again to upload the code to the device. And it's finished in 19 seconds. Now we are going to turn the device off and on to make the code running on it. And we will open Putty as our terminal program. We will click on serial. My device is at COM7 and the default speed is 115,200. You can see the log periodically being written on it. So let's increase this font as well to see better. You can see that each second we get this log. And you can see that our delay is one second. Now let's enhance our code and we are going to be defining this maximum number of factorials as 10 and we are going to put it in our code right here in line 18 for example. And what we will do is we are going to change our ISR interrupt service routine so that it's going to print out the factorials of numbers from 1 to 10. So let's copy this section. And we are going to replace it with our ISR here, the void button pressed. So let's paste it and I'm going to delete the older one, this section. Okay, we can save our code. What it will do is it's going to print out the factorials of numbers from 1 to 10 in this format. And we can build our application. And it's going to take some time, but I'm going to again trim that section for you so you can see that our build is complete. And we would like to upload this build to our device. We will use the programmer, but before that, I'm going to put it into DFU mode once again. I disconnected and connected the cable, but it's not necessary. I had a loose cable, so you don't have to do that each time. And I'm going to put it in DFU mode. And I'm going to select my device, select the code that I would like to upload. You can see that it's recently updated. And I'm going to click on write and write once again to upload on our device. Once it's uploaded, I'm going to turn 
my device off and on to make the code run. Let's turn it off and on. And I'm going to connect via putty once again. Select the COM port as COM7 where my device is at and set the default speed. And I'm going to click on open. You can see that the same message is being written, but you know that there will be a difference. So let's increase the font size once again. So once I press the button on the thingy 91, I'm going to see the factorials of the numbers from 1 to 10, just like this. So I create an interrupt by pressing the button and this output is written on the UART console. You can see that it's being written. Now in the second exercise, we will be using the logger module instead of the print K function. And you will see that the logger module is much more richer than the print K function. You will see these sections as timestamps, log level, module name, message, etc. And you will see the features of the logger module. And one we are going to do is again clone the repository for this exercise. And we are going to be adding it as a new application. Here you can see that I had already cloned it, fundamental lesson for exercise two. And once we select that folder, we will be asked a couple of questions by the Visual Studio code. I'm going to dismiss those and keep the current settings. And we will select our folder, fundamental lesson for exercise two. First, what we will do is we will be doing a change in the project.conf file, not the main.c. You can see that here it says enable the logger module. And we will do that by this line, config underscore log is equal to y, meaning yes. And we are going to save this conf file. This is the first thing that we will do. Now we will again go to our main.c file to make the changes. First thing we will do is include the header file for the logger module. Let's copy this one, include logging slash log.h. And we are going to paste it in step four as indicated here. We are going to paste it here. Now the second thing that we'll do is register the logger module. It's done with this line, log underscore module underscore register. You can see that we also set the log level with this. You see that it's log underscore level underscore debug. So it's going to print out all the messages, debug information, warning and errors, four types of messages. And we will copy this section and we are going to paste it in our code to print out these messages with the logger module. But as you can imagine, I'm going to again set it in the while one loop. I'm going to comment out this print k function because we are not using it anymore. I'm going to paste that section in the while one loop. I'm going to save my main.c file. So again, I'm going to get these messages in one second of delay. It will be periodical. So I set that duration here as well. And what we will do is we are going to change the ISR, the callback function, the button pressed, because we again don't want to use the print K function. We will use the logger module instead. So I'm going to paste that section and replace the button pressed function. So I'm going to select this and replace it with the new logger module ISR. So when I paste it, it's changed. You can see that log underscore inf, that's going to be used instead of the print K function. I'm going to build my application once again. And when I click on it, I will choose my board and I will click on build configuration. And it's going to start to build 
the configuration for me. Once our build is complete, we are going to program our device with the programmer tool. But before that, let's put it in TFU mode by pressing the button and turning it on. Once it's in DFU mode, we are going to select our device, Thing91, and we will choose our file in Fundamental Lesson 4 Exercise 2, Build Zephyr Folder, App underscore Sign.hex file, and we will click on Write, we will click on Write once again, so that it will be uploaded to our device. And once it's uploaded, we will again use PuTTY to connect to our device. But before that, we will turn our device off and on to make the uploaded code run on it. And we will be able to connect to our device once again on COM7 and the default speed. And we'll click on open. And you will see this new code running on it. Let's increase our font size to see better. You will see that there will be a timestamp, the log type, which is info, debug, warning, or error. And we will see that the warnings are in yellow color and the errors are in red color. And once we press the button, you see that we again see the factorials of the numbers from 1 to 10 being printed out. And we periodically see these log messages. In this third and the last exercise, we will be exploring the features of the logger module. And these are default settings when we enable the logging. And we will be invoking GUI config, and it, this will open up the Zephyr kernel configuration for us. And I'll show you now how to open that in the actions window. Just click on GUI config and the window will pop up Zephyr kernel configuration. And you can reach the logger module in subsystems and OS services. Once we expand it, we can reach the logging section as you can see here. And we can expand the other sub sections processing output formatting is important for us you see that colors in the backend we will be disabling that by entering a command in the project.conf and this is actually the same exercise with the previous one so you don't need to create another project for this just copy this line config log backend show color is equal to no and open the project.conf in the input files and paste this in line 4 and we are going to save our project.conf file and we will build our application once again and we will click on build and once the application is built once again we will be able to observe the changes that we made again in the GUI config. Once the build is complete, we will click right now again on GUI config. And this will pop up again the window of Zephyr kernel configuration. Let's again go to subsystems and OS services, again to logging. And let's go to output formatting once again. You can see that colors in the backend is now not selected as expected. So the things that we have written in the project.config has overwritten these sections. And once we flash the application, we will see these changes. So once the build is finished, we can upload it on the device via the programmer tool. However, we need to set it into DFU mode by pressing the button and turning the switch on at the same time. Once it's in DFU mode, we are going to select our device in the programmer tool. And then we will add file and choose our app underscore sign.hex file. 
you can see that it's the most recent one and we will click on right and again we are going to click right once again to upload it on the device once it's uploaded we will be turning it off and on to see the changes before that let's make put it ready let's turn off the device and turn it on there's a very simpler way to restart the session in Putty. You will see it right now. So you don't have to do all those connection stuff once again. Just click on restart session and you will see that we have lost those colors in the warning and error. Yellow and red colors. You can see that we no longer have those. But in the previous ones you can see those and we are going to do one last change we are going to change the logging implementation so it will be minimal meaning that we will lose the timestamp so this is the setting in project.conf we add this line and save the project.conf file and we build our application once again once the build is complete we will be again uploading it to our device but first we should again set the device in dfu mode you know the sequence turn it off push the button and at the same time turn it on and select your device select the file this is the most recent one you can see that it's the recent build and click on write and write once again and our device is uploaded it and we are going to turn it off and on to see the changes and let's open putty and restart our session Let's click on restart session from the menu. And you will see that we no longer see the timestamp. We no longer see the module name. What we see is the only names for D for debug, W for warning, E for error, and that's it.